Amen. Wow, we're up to 200 almost. This is amazing. Well, I'm going to tell you tonight what you might not hear at a lot of churches. The message that you need to hear at church. You know, I preached something similar to this last night, and it's still on my heart, so we're going to preach something again. I preached on Instagram last night. We're doing it here. This is the message that I have for you. I'm going to call it, why do you love God? Or why should you love God? Right? Most of us grew up and we know the church. They say, if you were to die tonight, where would you go? Right? That's the classic question. And it's not a bad one. Now, I'm going to ask you guys something. I am not going to answer any questions right now or any comments or anything like that while I'm preaching. It's just like at church. Please don't interrupt the preacher. I have a message for you. Please don't have a bunch of conversations. I'm not gonna answer a single question while I'm preaching. I guarantee you that. So just save yourself the time. We're gonna pray for the sick after the message, okay? This always happens, but there'll be people who ignore it. That's all right. I just want you to know why I'm ignoring your comments. So the question that gets asked is this. If you were to die tonight, Where would you go? Would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? And the the pastor would probably tell you that hell is a place of a lake of fire where there is burning, where there is weeping, where there is gnashing of teeth, right? This is what he would tell you. He would tell you that those who do not put their trust in Jesus Christ, those who do not give their life to Jesus Christ, will burn for eternity in hell. But those who trust in him will go to heaven. And you see, God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross because you're a sinner. You're a wretched sinner. And you need forgiveness. And you need to put your trust in the Lord tonight so that you can go to heaven. So that you can guarantee your name is in the book of life. And if you want to pray that prayer, I want you to raise your hand. You see, this is some of the preaching that I heard growing up. Not all the preaching that I heard, but I did hear some of it. And this is what the church at large in many parts of the country hear. Now, let me ask you this question. What about what I just said makes you love God? What about what I just said leads you to follow Jesus Christ? Aside from getting death insurance to make sure that you don't go to hell. What did I say? What did I say that provokes you to love? Nothing. Nothing. Now, did I tell you the truth? Yeah, I did. I told you that there's a hell and there's a heaven and God sent his son Jesus to save you, John three sixteen. Whoever believes in him is never going to die. They're going to have eternal life. Yeah, that might be enough to get you to pray a prayer. I'm sure if you listen to that, you would say, okay, I don't want to go to hell. I, I, I want to go to heaven. I don't want to burn forever. Who would? Yeah, I thank you, Jesus. Thanks for dying for me. Sure. You are not going to have any power in your life. There are people, there's someone watching right now. I feel like there's multiple people. There's more than five people watching this. I just feel like I've thought of the number five. I believe it's the Lord. There's more than five people tonight that you got saved because you didn't want to go to hell. If you would be honest, if you would be vulnerable, would you comment, that's me, if you got saved simply because you did not want to go to hell? Would you just say, that's me? If you, you, you don't have to, obviously, but if you feel vulnerable enough and honest, I want to challenge us tonight. I want to, I want to prick your heart. I want to cut you a little bit, just like Peter did. Look at here. There's four people, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Look, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people. Now, listen, you're not condemned. I don't want you to feel condemned, but I want to provoke you to see that you did not receive the full gospel. There are people that simply said yes to Jesus because they don't want to burn forever in hell. And listen, while that's a good place to start, you hear the gospel, you you responded to what you heard. I'm assuming what you heard was something like what I said. 
There's a heaven, there's a hell. You don't believe in God, you're going to burn forever. If you trust in the Lord, he paid the price, you're going to go to heaven. You say, yeah, of course, I don't want to go to hell. I'm guessing that's the gospel that you heard. And my friend, I need to tell you tonight that you were robbed when you were preached that word. You were absolutely robbed because the gospel, if preached correctly, is such good news that it sounds too good to be true. Tonight, I am going to preach to you the gospel. Friends, I I really feel fired up. I'm going to ask you a favor. I'm going to preach to you the full gospel tonight. And I promise you, you will understand exactly why you need God, exactly what Jesus Christ did for you, and exactly why you should love him. And I believe that the Spirit will speak through me tonight in such a way to to provoke you and to prick your heart that you will love God. Now, I'm going to ask you to do a favor. We went from 90 to 130 in a few seconds. I'm going to ask all 233 of you for the next six seconds, would you please double tap this? I really feel like this message is going to be different than any message I've ever preached. Would you double tap the screen for six seconds so we can get more people online? I want to preach to as many people as possible because they need to hear this message that is going to set them free tonight. We just saw in the comments, so many of you got saved, but you didn't hear the full gospel. You've been robbed. I don't want you to be robbed. Thank you, my friends. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. Look, we're already up to 270. This is amazing. We got 35 more people who are going to hear the gospel. Let's do it. We're going to dive right in. First, you need to understand something. You need to understand what sin does. Why Why is there sin? What does it mean that you are a sinner? Okay, so we all know the story of Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve, they ate the fruit from the tree and they shouldn't have because God told them not to and they sinned and wow, thanks Adam and Eve, you really blew it for all of humanity because now we're all born into sin. Okay, so the Bible says this, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. What this means is this. All of you and I have sinned. The Bible goes on to say in John that if you say you do not have sin, you are a liar, and the love of God is not in you, right? You can't say you don't have sin. You're born into sin. It's in your bloodline. You're born from Adam and Eve's bloodline. Okay? But let's take it a step further. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever had hatred build up in your heart? Maybe you didn't even say anything, but it built up. Have you ever looked upon the opposite sex with lust or even the same sex, which is a sin in itself? You see, Jesus sees the heart. In the Old Testament, they had 613 laws and 10 commandments to keep. And the Pharisees did a great job of keeping this outward appearance, right? I'm not committing adultery. I'm not murdering. I'm not stealing. I'm not coveting. I'm a pretty good person. That was a Pharisee. And Jesus came and he said this. No, actually, if you even look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. If you have hate towards your brother, you've murdered him in your heart. You see, Jesus sees the heart. And so I say all this to say, you have sinned. You've sinned. Now, sin has a price. Sin demands a payment. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. Wages are something that you earn, right? I have a job. When I go to work, I put the hours in, and on payday, I receive my wages for my work. For what I have done, I get a wage, right? The Bible says that the wages of your sin is death. You deserve 
death because of your sin tonight. You deserve death. I deserve death. Now, what is death? Everyone thinks death is just dying on the earth, right? Well, it's not because John 3.16 says this, that if you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll never perish. Another translation says you'll never die. So we continue living. We just move on from earth to be with Jesus Christ. But the Bible does say in Hebrew that it's appointed for a man to die but once. So everyone on this live, all 248 of us, including myself, within 90 years, pretty much all of us are going to be dead unless one of you breaks a world record. We're all going to be dead. And something is going to happen when we die. Our sin is going to demand a payment. This is what the Bible says. Romans 6.23 will come to pass when you die. When you stand before the throne of God, there will be a payment for your sin. And so we have two options here. The first option is this. You can pay for your sin on your own. You can pay for your sin. You can say, listen, I don't need God. I don't need all of this. Whatever this guy's talking about, this PNW evangelist, whatever that is, guy, wearing this Jesus is King hoodie. I don't need that. I don't need this. That's stupid. God's stupid. Jesus is stupid. I don't believe in him. This is what people say. You should see some of my DMs. You've seen some of the comments. So you say, I don't need God, or I don't believe in God, or you say, God's not real. Listen, I can sit here all day and say, I don't, I don't need a utility bill. I don't believe in utility bills. I'm just going to run my power as long as I want to. I'm not paying for crap. I'll tell you what, my friend, there will come a day when my utility bill demands a payment, and there will be a consequence if I do not make that payment, how many of you know that after a certain amount of time, my power will shut off? There will be a consequence for my payment. I don't have to believe in it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change the fact that it's still true. My friends, I'm here to tell you tonight that the word of God is infallible. It means that there are no errors. It is perfect. It is absolutely true. Tonight, your sin demands a payment. Colossians 1.21 says this, that you, because of your sin, because of the wicked works of your mind, you are an enemy of God. Now, how many of us here want to be enemies of God? The God of the universe, the God who spoke existence into being with his mouth. The God who literally put the stars in the sky, separated day from night, separated land from water, things that we couldn't even fathom being able to do, let alone do them. This is God. And tonight, I'm here to tell you that if you are not born again, if you are not saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, tonight, you are an enemy of God. Now, I don't tell you this to scare you, my friend. There is much more to this message, but I need to tell you the truth. Your sin makes you an enemy to God. You see, God is perfect. God is holy. God is righteous. That means that where he is, imperfection can't exist. He's God. Where he is, sin does not exist. Pain does not exist. Suffering does not exist. And so to come into the presence of God, it demands perfection. Now, don't twist my words. Don't get ahead of me here and say, well, how in the world could I ever be perfect? Are you saying I got to be perfect to come to God? No, I'm not. The funny thing is you could never do it on your own. That's the entire point. You could never come to God on your own. The Bible says that you can't even come to the Lord unless he calls you. My friend, he's calling you tonight. Listen to the words I say tonight. I promise you, I will preach you the truth and God will call you unto himself. And so we say, well, we can't get to God on our own. 
There's people that think there's many ways to heaven. We're all going to go to heaven. These are some theories that are out there. My friend, there is one way to heaven. It is through Jesus Christ alone. Jesus Christ came and the Bible says that he is a stumbling block of offense. Now, what does that mean? Jesus Christ, a stumbling block of offense. It means that Jesus is offensive to those who are prideful, analytical, those who are too smart for this Christian bullcrap. That's what they say. They say, that's ridiculous. Anyone can go to heaven. We're all going to go to heaven. This is hell, brother. We're all going to make it. God's a loving God. He'll bring us all in. I, I talk to God all the time. I don't need Jesus. False. The Bible says, Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I'm the way to God. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now that is offensive if you think in your own mind, in your own human wisdom, which the Bible says earthly wisdom is sensual and demonic. That means that it is based off of feelings and emotions. It's demonic. And so you think you can get to God on your own, and Jesus says, absolutely not. But he doesn't just leave us hanging there. You see, sin demands a payment. Sin has cut you off from God. Colossians 1.21, you are an enemy of God because of your sin, because of the wicked works of your mind. It says that you are alienated from God. If you are not born again tonight, you are alienated. You are cut off from God. You are a foreigner. You're an outsider. You are exiled. This is what it means. But Jesus Christ has reconciled you to a holy God. So we're starting to get into the beginning of the gospel. You understand now that you have sinned against a holy God. You might say, well, I'm a pretty good person. You know, I, I don't really do anything bad. I don't, I don't sleep around. I don't drink. I don't smoke. You know, I try to give to the poor. The Bible says that the taking in the orphans and caring for widows is true religion. I do that. My friend, the Bible also says this, that your good works are like filthy rags before the Lord. What do you do with a filthy rag? You toss it out. It's worthless. You're not going to clean anything with a filthy rag. A filthy rag's not going to get you anything. My friend, your good works in and of themselves, apart from Jesus Christ, are not going to get you anything. You can't do it on your own. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says that you're not saved by your works. And so tonight you understand that you've sinned against God. The Bible says that if you've broken one of God's laws, you've broken all of them. You've sinned against God and you are guilty tonight. You're guilty. You're guilty. And so we've sinned. We have this sin. We, we have something that is keeping us from God. Sin that's going to require a payment. That's going to send me to hell. That's what I'm going to earn because of my sin. And so Colossians 1.21 says this, While you were a sinner, while you were alienated from God, you were an enemy of God, Jesus Christ, through his sacrifice, has reconciled you. Now let's break that down. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's God's only Son. That's what John 3.16 says. The only Son of God. Now reconciled means to make right. Think if you argue with your siblings or your parents and you have this tension between you and you apologize to each other and you forgive each other and you reconcile, right? You make right what was wrong. So something was wrong. We were enemies of God and Jesus Christ, God's only begotten son, made us right with God. Do you want to know how Jesus made us right? Do you want to know how Jesus took someone who was God's enemy and made them right, made you right? He came to earth, lived a perfect life, fulfilled every law. He never sinned. 
and he chose to go to the cross. Now, why on earth would Jesus choose the cross? Why would he choose to be tortured and brutally murdered on a cross? Because of this, the Bible says that cursed was anything that hung on a pole. And so the Bible says that Jesus became our sin and he hung on that pole. The Bible says he became sin who knew no sin. Jesus was perfect, but for a moment, when he hung on that cross, when he chose to die for you, he died for you, and he died for me. When he chose to do that, he became sin. He became our sin. Think about that. All of the sin that you've ever committed, that's enough to probably wipe someone out from shame and guilt and condemnation. They'd probably feel terrible if they were to wear all of your sin. Now imagine all of the sin for all of humanity that was and is and is to come. Every person's sin that they have ever done, are doing, or will do. He became that very sin. Because when he did, sin was cursed in the flesh. And Jesus Christ died with our sin. Now he didn't stay dead. God raised him up again on the third day. Jesus Christ resurrected. He ascended from hell, defeating sin and death in the flesh. And he came back to his disciples, to the men that followed him for three years or so. He came back to them and he said, listen, I've given you all the authority that you need. Go out and preach the gospel. Go heal the sick like I did. Go raise the dead. Go cast out demons. Go do the greater works. Jesus empowered them. And how did he empower them? He gave them the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God's Spirit. It's the Spirit of God in us. Jesus Christ walked with that spirit. That's how he healed the sick. He raised the dead. He cleansed the the lepers. If you go look up leprosy, it's pretty freaking disgusting. He wasn't wearing a mask and gloves. He wasn't social distancing. He cleansed the lepers. He was full of faith and he had the kingdom to give them. He wasn't in fear. Jesus was amazing. And he still is because he's alive. And the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, he gave to us. And we're going to touch on that in a minute. So let's, let's back up here. We have sin. We're enemies of God. We're cut off from God. No chance of ever saving ourselves. Jesus comes. The Bible says that for God, God so loved us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, That Jesus, because of the joy that was set before him, chose to endure the cross. My friend, tonight you need to know that you are the joy that was before Jesus Christ. You were his motivation. He saw you. The Bible says in Psalm 139 that he saw your unformed body. All of your days are written in his book. He knows a word before it's on your tongue. He knitted you together in your mother's womb. You see, Jesus knows you better than you know yourself. The hairs on your head are numbered. He knows everything. And while you were a sinner, even on your worst day, even when you mocked him, even when you spit in his face with your words and with your life, denying him, living for yourself, living prideful, living lustful, living sensually, he said, no, I know this person. I know the potential of their life with my life inside of them. I know their created value, their created purpose, their design. And if they submit to me, if they give me their life, I will make them a brand new creation. I will put my spirit inside of them and make them someone that can step on the head of the devil every day of their life. They're going to know God like I knew God, and they're going to be with me in heaven forever. You see, this is the gospel. That Jesus Christ came while you were a sinner, dead in your sin, didn't give a crap about God, and he said, I love you. 
I'm going to lay my life down for you because there will be a day when you hear a message preached and you understand the great love I have for you and you decide that you would rather pursue me than pursue the things of the world because sin leads to death and death leads to eternal separation from God. Some of you tonight love your sin. You're comfortable in your sin. You're you're not convicted. You're not struggling with your sin. You enjoy it. You make provision for it. You plan on sinning. It's what you think about. It consumes you. You're a slave. The Bible says that if you're born again, you're no longer a slave to sin. You've been set free. That we are slaves to righteousness if we're born again. Well, guess what? If you are not born again, that means that you are a slave to sin and you obey your master. And do you know who the master is of sin? It's Satan. And you can't serve two masters. A house divided against itself will not stand. You serve the devil. You don't want to serve the devil. He doesn't love you. He's leading you to hell. He's leading you to death. He wants to keep you from eternal life. He wants to keep you from understanding who you were created to be. He wants you to think that he's not real, God's not real, none of this matters. I'm here to tell you today that it's all very real and it really does matter. Your sin will lead you to death. I've told you. Now you're accountable. You can continue in your sin, but know that it will lead to death and you will have to pay for that sin when you die. My friend, why would you do such a thing when Jesus Christ came and he poured out his own blood for you so that you would not ever have to pay for your sin? You see, Jesus doesn't just come and forgive your sin. You know, in the Old Testament, they had the power to forgive sin too, but that's about all they could do. You see, they had a day of atonement. And once a year, the high priest would go in and he'd do this little ritual that God told him to do. And he'd do these sacrifices. And if he did them right, the sins of the people and himself were forgiven. They weren't cleansed. They weren't clean. They weren't removed. They were just forgiven. They were still remembered. They were just forgiven. Now, if the high priest did something wrong, he died like dead. He had to do this ritual and the sacrifice just right, or he would drop dead because the presence of God is so holy. You see, this is what happens when imperfection comes into the presence of God. Things die. And so they would tie a rope around this guy in case he did something wrong so they could pull him out and try to send someone else in who wouldn't mess it up. God demands perfection. Jesus Christ is our perfection. The Bible says this, he became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. You see, I'm mad tonight at those of you who had to hear a gospel message that didn't include anything about transformation. It only talked about heaven and hell. Heaven and hell is a fine place to start, but there better be more to that message. Jesus Christ didn't just come to save you from hell. The Bible says he came to restore, to redeem, to save that which was lost. Do you know what was lost? Heaven wasn't lost. We were lost. But do you know what was really lost? Our relationship with God. Back in the days of Adam and Eve, you say, well, how could they have sinned? They walked with God in the garden. They communed with him, they fellowshiped with him, and they still sinned. Why? Because they began to think for themselves, and they listened to the voice of the enemy, and it led to their death. God was merciful, but they ended up dying. They would have lived forever in the garden. Jesus came, and he had the same choice. You see, the devil provided Jesus with plenty of opportunities to live out of his flesh. He he tempted Jesus even while he was fasting out in the wilderness. He tempted him. The Bible says that Jesus sympathizes with our weakness because he came as a man and he was tempted at all points. Jesus was tempted in every way that you could be tempted, but without fault. Jesus never sinned. But he paid for our sin. 
He became our sin. Even though he never sinned, he took our sin on and he died. And his blood forgave and cleansed all of our sin. You see, it's not just forgiveness. It's forgetness. Some of you tonight have sinned a lot. You've sinned so much that you don't understand how God could forgive you. You don't understand how God could love you because you see your life and it's so messed up and you think about the things you've done and you can hardly live with yourself. And you say, okay, well, even if I do get saved, how am I going to go on? I've done some terrible things. Guess what? It gets better. The gospel is not done yet. It's not just forgiveness. Jesus isn't just going to say, hey, I forgive you. I forgive you. The Bible says that he remembers your sin no more. He forgets your sin. It's forgiveness and forgetness. He throws your sins, your past, into the sea of forgetfulness. The Bible says that your sins are as far as the east is from the west. If you start going north, at some point you're going to come back down and be going south. But if you start going east or west, you will always go east and west. And your sins are as far as the east is from the west. That means that they can never come back together. Your sins are removed as though you've never done it. Imagine this. You are in court and your sin is being held against you. Now, God is a good judge. He's a righteous judge. He's a just judge. If you were judged according to his commands, you would be guilty. And there's nothing you could say about it. You're dead to rights. You're guilty. But Jesus advocates for you. The Bible says that he intercedes for you on your behalf every day to God. Intercedes means he's praying for you, right? He's speaking for you. And so Jesus comes and he says, God, Father, don't look at them. Don't look at what they've done. Look at what I've done. The Bible says that there is a mercy seat and the blood of Jesus is sprinkled on that mercy seat as an offering. Why did it take blood? The Bible says this, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. There's no cleansing of sins. There's no removal of sins. There had to be bloodshed. Jesus was that perfect lamb that was sacrificed. He was the perfect the final sacrifice. And so you're in court and you're guilty. There's no way around it. And Jesus comes and he says, no, look at what I've done. And God accepts Jesus's sacrifice because it is perfect. It is holy. It is righteous. It fulfills the law. It pays the demand for your sin because your sin still requires a payment. Only now you're off the hook. All charges against you have been dropped. You don't even have a criminal history. You don't have a rap sheet. You don't have a record. Jesus didn't just drop the charges. He ripped up all of your documents, all of your files. There's no history that you were ever in trouble in the first place. When they look at you, it's like you've never even been stopped. Why? Because Jesus's blood paid for your sin. And so tonight, you have two options. You can pay for your sin on your own. You can listen to everything that I've said. You can deny it completely, reject it, just like they rejected Jesus in the flesh. And you will pay for your sin when you die. Or you can humble yourself and you can say, God, thank you that you really sent Jesus. I believe in what this evangelist is saying. I believe that Jesus came because he loves me. You sent him, God, because you love me and you wanted me. You saw my value, you saw my potential and you, Jesus, paid the price for my sin. I am going to accept your payment and I'm going to ask you to forgive my sin. You see, you can have Jesus 
pay the price for your sin, but it's only good if you apply his blood to your life, if you apply his sacrifice. You can't just know about it. You can't just hear about it and it's in effect. It would be like if I sent you this hoodie. I just got this hoodie. I love it. It's really cool. And it would be like if I sent you this hoodie and you get it in the mail and you're like, wow, PNW Evangelist Shane Winnings, he sent me his hoodie. He sent me this hoodie. This is so cool. Thank you. And then you put it in your closet. What effect does that have? What good is this hoodie for you when you go outside and it's cold? Nothing. It has no effect. Why? Because you haven't put it on. The Bible says to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Apply the Lord Jesus Christ to your life. Jesus Christ said this, If you do not deny yourself, pick up your cross and follow me. You're not worthy of me. There's a sacrifice. We must follow Jesus Christ. I'm not asking you to pray a prayer tonight. I'm not asking you to just agree with me. There is a sacrifice. You're, you're, you're getting your sin paid for. You're avoiding eternal punishment in hell, separation from God in hell, in the lake of fire, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, where there's outer darkness, where there's isolation, where there's hopelessness. Forever, you're off the hook. Your sin's been paid for. But now you have to live for him. And this brings me to my original point. And this is what my message was about. Why do you love Jesus? Why should you love Jesus? This is for those people who don't know him. And this is for those people that said yes to him just so they could get out of hell. You see, that is just death insurance. That's not out of love. Maybe there's some love involved because you say, well, thanks for saving me from hell. But I just want to make sure I don't go to hell just in case this guy's right. So I'm going to pray this prayer because I really don't want to burn forever. There's no love in that. You see, if you listen to the words that I've said tonight, you will understand why Jesus is worth every ounce of your affection, your energy, your emotion. That's why he said the first commandment is this, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your strength, with everything in you. Love the Lord. Why love the Lord? Because you were an enemy of him, heading to hell because of your sin, which you were absolutely guilty of, and it demanded a payment. And while you were still a sinner, God sent his son. And while you were still a sinner, Jesus said, I love you anyways. I'm going to die because I believe one day you'll say yes to me back. I'm saying I love you with my hands on the cross. When will you say I love you back? I believe that you will and I'm going to lay my life down and I'm going to believe that you're going to receive me too. This is what Jesus did for us. The Bible says that we love God because he first loved us. Why should you love God tonight? Why should you love Jesus? Because he first loved you and he proved it on the cross when he made you a friend, when he made you a co-heir with Christ. You are a co-heir to the kingdom of God. You share in the inheritance with Jesus Christ. That's why you love God. You went from an enemy to a son, an enemy to a daughter of the most high God, of the most high king. This is why we love God. And the Bible says this, that we're saved by grace through faith. So you might be asking me this. Okay, you've explained sin. You've explained that it demands a payment. You've explained who Jesus is, why he came, and what he did. Now what do I do? How do I get saved? 
That has to be the question on many of your minds tonight as I have explained this, as I have preached this gospel. There have to be some of you saying, what do I do to be saved? The Bible says this, if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. For by grace you're saved through faith, not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. What does all that mean? You're saved by grace through faith. Grace is a gift you don't deserve. You didn't deserve what Jesus did, but he did it anyways. So you're saved by grace, by the sacrifice of Jesus through faith. Do you know what faith is? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Faith is believing in something that you cannot see. But I believe tonight that as I preached, as I have spoken and God has spoken through me to you, that you have felt God speak to your heart, that you have felt God speak in your mind and say, say yes tonight. You see, your faith is being authored. It's being, uh, it's being, put in the beginning stages because Jesus is the author, the creator of our faith. Tonight, faith is building up in many of you because of the words that I have said. So we're saved by grace through faith. We're saved because we believe in what we heard. We believe in the gift of Jesus Christ. Not of yourselves. You're not saved by yourself. You can't save yourself. We've already explained that. Not by works. We already know our works will get us nothing apart from Christ, lest anyone should boast. No one will be able to brag and say, I did it. You didn't do anything. Jesus did everything. We're called to believe. And so tonight, I want to invite you, if you are ready, if you are ready to turn away from your sin because you realize you have to confess that you are a sinner, To confess means to come along with, to come alongside, right? Or to say the same thing. That's what confession means. And so here's confession. I have told you and God has said, you are a sinner. You have sinned. So you confess and you say, I have sinned. You are absolutely right, God. I am a sinner. I have sinned against you and I'm sorry. You confess. Then you repent. You make a decision because you realize that your sin was leading you to death because Satan hates you. Your sin was leading you to death. It was leading you away from God. But you heard the word tonight and you know you don't want any part of that anymore because God has spoken to you. And so you turn away from your sin. You make a decision in your mind. You change your mind about how you're living. That's what repent means. So we confess and now we repent We say, God, I don't want anything to do with that lifestyle anymore. I want to live for you. And then we receive forgiveness and we confess that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. My friends, if you are ready to do that tonight, if you are ready to be born again, made a new creation, this is how I'm going to finish. You're not going to be just transformed into something similar breaking down who you are and build you back up. The Bible says you're a new creation. Do you know what creation means? It means to make something out of nothing, right? To make something brand new that's never existed before. That's a creation. It's not an invention. It's a creation. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, they are a new creation. If you want to be made brand new tonight, if you want a new heart, If you want a heart of flesh, God's heart to replace your current heart, if you want to be forgiven of your sin, if you want to turn away from your sinful lifestyles, confess your sin and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord because you understand that he loves you so much that he poured everything out to get you. He poured out his only son and Jesus Christ willingly went to the cross and poured out his own blood. If you want to accept that tonight and follow Jesus Christ, I want you to comment, I will follow Jesus. I want you to comment that right now. I will follow 
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Is there anyone? I find it hard to believe that no one commented. No one commented, I will follow Jesus. Weird. You guys did? I didn't, I haven't seen any of it. Wow, look at this. I, did, I have not seen any of these comments. I don't know what happened. Look at that. Okay, praise God. For, on my end, I didn't see any comments. So I was like, uh, what in the world is going on? Praise God. There's so many of you. Okay, here's what we're going to do. This is super important. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. We're going to put some words to how you're feeling right now, okay? But I need you to do something for me. I've teamed up with the Jesus Clubs, and they have this amazing resource. You're going to be a new Christian, right? You don't know anything about being a Christian. You need some help. You need some guidance, a little bit of discipling. Well, there are pastors that are standing by that are ready to guide you through these next steps. And I've teamed up with the Jesus Clubs and we have that ability to provide you with those resources. But they're only good if you take advantage of them. Now, last week we had 150 people say yes to Jesus. Only 30 texted in. Now, I don't know your heart, but it makes me wonder did only 30 people want to take the next step? Was it genuine? Because if I'm all in for Jesus, then I need to know what it means to be a Christian. I need to know what it means to follow him. How do I follow Jesus Christ? You need help. My friends, if you said yes to Jesus tonight, if you're giving your life to Jesus tonight, please text SAVED to 626 626- 313-4306. Just text them really quick. And after the live, you can, uh, there's going to be something for you to fill out and they're going to get you connected with someone who's going to help you. They're amazing. Okay. So please text that word. I believe that many people, over a hundred people said yes to Jesus tonight. How many will text in? How many will take advantage of this? Or will you let the gospel Go in one ear and out the other. You'll wake up tomorrow or next week and you'll be right back to where you started. Or are you serious? Do you want to really follow Jesus? He's not asking for a lukewarm Christian. He's not asking for just your verbal yes, but not with your life. He said, follow me. You need some help doing that. I promise you. If you text this number, you're going to get some help, some resources. Amen. Okay, we're going to pray right now. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to leave this up while we pray. I want you to put your hands out like this. If you said yes to Jesus tonight, we're going to pray. We're going to talk to God right now, okay? So put your hands out like you're going to receive a gift, and I'm going to pray. I want you to repeat after me, but don't just repeat it. I want you to listen to what I'm saying, and then I want you to say it to God. And at the end of the prayer, we're going to ask God to speak to you. And whatever the first thing that comes to your mind is, I want you to comment it below so that we can all share in the testimony. God's going to speak to you tonight. And what happens is God puts his spirit inside of you. And so when he speaks, it can sound like your own thought, only it's directed at you. It's awesome. God will speak to you. Okay, let's pray right now. Just stick your hands out and let's pray. Say this after me. Say, God, thank you that you love me. Thank you for sending your only son, to die for me. Jesus, I believe in you. 
I believe that you died for my sins and that you rose again on the third day. I confess that I have sinned and I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me of all of my sin, God. Cleanse me of all unrighteousness. Be my Lord and my Savior. God, I ask you to give me your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come into my life. I invite you in right now. Fill me. Lead me and guide me. All the days of my life, I will follow you. God, speak to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, just listen for him. My daughter is the first thing I thought of. Yeah, God's calling you his daughter. God's speaking to you. Praise God. I'm here for you. You're saved. He said, I love you. Guys, read these comments. This is amazing. I heard my child, you are loved. You're saved. I heard I love you. I heard my daughter. I felt a release of anxiety. My first thought is you are loved. I heard you are saved. You've been saved. Someone heard my son. I heard I'm here. Two people heard I'm here. Another person heard I loved you. I love you. Many people heard I love you. Directed at you. Isn't that amazing? You ask God to speak to you and he says, I love you. That's the truth. He's always loved you. My son, I love you so much. I've been waiting for you to come back. That's awesome. I felt like evil left my body. Praise God. I saw light and I started crying. That's amazing. That is so good. Praise God. This is awesome. It felt like he touched my face. That's cool. Man, this is great. My spirit feels different. I feel new. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay, listen, guys. If you prayed that prayer, please text saved. This is also how we document how many people have given their lives to Jesus. You know, we have a goal this year to see 100,000 people make a decision for Christ. But those are documented decisions. Not just counting on the live how many people say yes. How many people comment in and get plugged in. We believe 100,000 people will have a genuine salvation. That's what we want to see. And when you text, we can keep track of how many people text in. It's amazing. Amen? Man, this is so cool. Praise God. Okay, so that was the gospel. The gospel means the good news. And I think you would all agree that what I preached to you tonight was some good news. That while sin and hell are real, what Jesus did is even more real. Now, we're going to pray for the sick right now. You know, when Jesus was on the earth, he healed every single person that he went to that was sick or that came to him 100% of the time. And he gave us that same authority. He gave us the power through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for this gift, my friend. He gave us the power through the Holy Spirit to heal the sick as well. And so we're going to pray right now. The Bible says where two or more are gathered, he's in the midst. And so we believe with this 231 people that God is here and he's moving. And so here's what I want you to do. If you have a pain in your body, I want you to hover your hand. Don't touch it. I want you to hover your hand over your pain or over your sickness or over your injury. Just hover it. If it's your shoulder, just hover it a couple inches over it. We're going to pray. I believe that you're going to be healed by God tonight. I believe that some of you will feel the tangible presence of God touch your body. And you'll know it's him because you're not going to be touching yourself. 
Amen? Let's pray right now. God, I thank you in Jesus' name that you love us so much. Thank you for all of the people that you brought into your kingdom tonight that said yes to you. Thank you for everyone that you spoke to. God, you are here and you are moving mightily. And God, we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, would you heal my friends? Every sickness represented in these bodies, I command to leave in the name of Jesus. Every bit of pain, I say go and get out in Jesus' name. All pain, leave right now in Jesus' in Jesus' mighty name. God, I thank you for every illness, every injury being completely healed right now at the sound of my voice by your power, God, by your glory, not mine. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, test it out. Test your bodies out. Wherever there was pain, see if it's still there. Whatever was injured, see if it's still injured. And let me know in the comments below. I had tingles all throughout me. That's pretty cool. I had a big headache. Now it's gone. I'm healed my ankle. That's pretty cool. Mental health. No, I'm not healing anyone. God is. My knee isn't healing anymore. Someone said OMFG. I hope that's freaking gosh. I healed my, my arm is healed. Wow, my head was hurting and it's not. I love that people say wow. They're amazed because it is amazing. My knee has been bad for the longest time, but I can walk unsolicited now. The pain in my mouth is gone. My shoulder doesn't hurt anymore. This is awesome. God is touching people. Yeah, autoimmune disorders leave in Jesus' name. Leave in Jesus' name. Breathing disorders leave in Jesus' name. Look at all these. Scroll through these comments. You can do it. Read all these people that are getting healed. Oh, thank you, God. It's all the Lord. It's not me. I'm not awesome. I am not amazing at all. I am terrible without the Lord. I need him so badly. It's him who's doing this. Man, so many people are getting healed. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, God. Now listen, if you need prayer for something specific, something different, you can text prayer to the same number. Text prayer to the same number. That is another available resource for you guys. Oh, so good. Thank you, Lord God. Okay, I want to share something with you guys before we get off of here. Man, a lot of people just with no faith on here tonight. Makes me sad. I'm going to share something. I'm looking for a picture to add. See if I still have it. I might not, guys. I might be gone. Let's see if I have it. Well, anyways, on my bio, or on my website, there is a link. Mm, that didn't work. That's me. Let's just turn this off. How about that? All right. So here's the thing. In the last month, we have reached 20 million people in a month. My goal for this year is half a billion. That's 500 million. And we want to lead all around the country and preach the gospel this summer. We want to go to every major city that we possibly can, but we need your help. You see, we're not sponsored by anyone. We simply go off donations, and we want this to be free events for you guys. Free. I want to come to your city, and I want to set up, and I want to preach the gospel in a large field, and have you and all your friends come for free, and see the sick healed, start a fire for the Lord, and go to the next city. That's what I want to do. Revival in this nation. But we need your help. 
If you click the link, the website on my profile, there's a video for a little cru uh, teaser for these crusades, but there's also three ways to give below. Now listen, I'll never stop making free content. I'll always do this as long as I possibly can, this TikTok church, but I'll always make free videos, right? We've been doing TikTok church every Monday night since July. Isn't that amazing? We've seen thousands of people saved and healed. If you believe in what we're doing and you want to help us go further with the gospel, reach more of this nation, put feet on the ground in cities, I need your help. I'm just funding it alone with my wife and some generous donors that have sent us support. We had a little girl who was 13, I think. She gave us 50 cents and it nearly made me cry. That's all she had, but she believed. We had someone give $1,000. You see, you can give any amount if the Lord leads you. I only want you to give if you feel led and if you believe in what we're doing and you want to help us. You know, not everyone can go do or not everyone feels called to do what I'm doing, but everyone can pray and everyone can give. It's just, is the Lord leading you to? So I would ask you this. If you feel led to partner with our ministry, would you visit that link on my profile and consider donating. Some people give a certain dollar amount. Some people give every month. They have a monthly donation. Some people give 10%. That's tithing. That's what they did in the Bible. 10% of your income to a ministry. I'll let the Lord lead and guide you for how much if to give at all. But I wanted to make that available to you because we're not going to be able to do it if we don't receive support. And I love you guys. And I wanted to extend that invitation. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Someone says, what ministry is this you're asking money for? It's the ministry. Oh, thank you. Gloria just sent us $20. Thank you, Gloria. Well, I just told you, but I can tell you again, we're going to travel the entire country as far as the money will take us to every major city. We're going to set up and we're going to preach the gospel and you can come free of charge and listen and hear the gospel. You can invite your friends that aren't saved to hear a message like you heard tonight, a message that pricks the heart and provokes someone to give their lives to Christ, to change their lives forever, bring the sick and have them healed in Jesus' name. It's not free to fly everywhere. It's not free to have a hotel. It's not free to have a rental car. It's not free to have equipment, but it will be free to you. And I will come to your city if we get the money. We're going to go everywhere we possibly can. Every dollar goes towards that. It's not paying my bills. It's not buying me a car. It's putting on gospel crusades all over the country. If you believe in that, would you consider donating to our ministry? That is what we're doing. Someone says, come to Norway. I would love to come to Norway one day. Someone says, Jesus is free. He absolutely is. I'm guessing that you did not pay to join this live where I just preach the gospel to thousands of people. By the end of this live, we'll probably have seen over three or 4,000 people. That was free. All my content is free. You're on a free app. My YouTube is free. My Instagram is free. Everything that I have is free. I'm asking you to donate if you want us to do more. And you know what, my friend? You don't have to donate. No one has a gun to your head. I love these comments. They're so ignorant, to be honest. It's just people who don't know the Lord or care to know him at all. And we don't need to give them any time of day. But I'm thankful for you guys. You guys are amazing. Let's see. Just looking at any comments before I get off of here. Yeah, Gloria, I just gave you a shout out. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Jersey, we want to come to Jersey. I'm telling you, I want to go to every state, every major city we possibly can. We're going to do it. We're going to go as far as we can until we run out of money. Then we're going to try to raise some more. Then we're going to go some more, somewhere else until we cover the whole country. My family lives in Florida, so we want to make it all the way over there. I mean, I want to do the whole East Coast as well. Um, someone's asking where to give. The link on my bio, my friend. Click the website on my TikTok profile. Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal is all available right there. All right. Well, God bless you guys. We're going to sign off for tonight. I will upload this to YouTube this week. 
I just uploaded last night's Instagram church to my YouTube. Do me a favor, would you? Follow me on TikTok so that you get alerted when we go live. Hit that follow button really quick. Alexandria, thank you. She just donated $5. Thank you so much. Praise God. Hit that follow button so you don't miss out on any new content. Head over to my profile. You click the little square. You can follow my Instagram and my YouTube. I post all of my teaching and full-length sermons on my YouTube. And sometimes I go live on YouTube as well. And I go live on Instagram once a week as well for Instagram Church. So there's so much content that I'm putting out for you guys. It's all for you to receive. Wilma just gave $20. Thank you so much, Wilma. God bless you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you so much. All right. We're going to head out. I'm going to spend some time with my lovely wife. God bless you guys. Good night.